Jyoti Prakash is a renowned Sindhi writer, poet, and winner of the Sahitya Academy Award for his travelogue on Sindh. He is currently the honorary director of the Sadhu Hiranand Navarai Academy in Adipur, where he is actively involved in teaching youngsters. He was born on the 15th of May 1931, and for the last 52 years has been actively very involved in teaching children. He migrated to India from the, at the time of partition and has witnessed it all first hand, the kind of trauma that people went through at the time. Dr. Pranash, could you tell us about those days of partition when you came to India, you were about 15, 16? I was about 15, 16 years old when the country was partitioned. Immediately after the partition was announced, I migrated to India along with my brother who had retired from Latin. My parents did not accompany me, they were in our late. Since I was the eldest son, they wanted that I should travel with my brother-in-law and go to India as I would have been safe. And I started studying further in India, in in Bombay. I was to not be KJ Kinnani High School, VT, Boy And then I changed one school later on was a student of Sindhi Kasnapur High School in Hatkopa. From there I passed SSC examination in 19, I think it was 50 and I started my career as a teacher in 1951. The days that I passed in Bombay in company of brother were difficult indeed. I was not mature enough to go and take up a job at the age of 16 and could not help him financially. We did a hard job in Bombay and we lived on that meager income that we had. That was in 1947, after. Thereafter, when my brothers, sisters, mother, father, grandmother, all of them came. We settled in a refugee camp near Deva. That was called Jawai. With no source of income, my father was not in a position to support the family. What was he doing then, sir? He was Landowner, a small landowner, Zamindar like you. And also side by side was postmaster of the village. He was perhaps the first educated person who had passed matriculation of Bombay University from the village. What was his name? Sukram Das Sharma was his name. He had been taught by eminent writers like Lachar Zamandu Manjapthyan, Asan Mantova, a few teachers that he named to me were very prominent writers of Sindhi at that time. Immediately 
as we migrated from settled uh, from shifted from Jawa and Devlali, we came to Bombay uh, and lived uh, in Chal at Railroad, which was nearest railway station, nearest to VT, 10 minutes run by train, local train. There we had one room. And we were all the members of the family in one room. How many of you? We were about seven. My sisters were there, my two brothers. Only two of my six sisters were married. Four were unmarried. Two brothers were children, students, and they used to go to school. I was myself a student. The circumstances were so compelling that I had to take up a job to support the family. After trying his best to get a job, my father could not succeed. He left for a place like Sivakasi in Madras as an accountant in India made factory. And I remember he had kept rupees 10 on my palm saying that that was the end money he was left with and I had to start the life with rupees 10 to support the whole family. I did one or two odd jobs like working in a place, working in a block making company for which I used to get about 75 80 rupees a month. Then 1951 I started my career as a teacher. I became teacher immediately after passing my SSC. And I continued studying further along with my job. I hardly used to attend the college. I used to only go at the time of examinations, pay the fees, borrow from somebody, and appear for various examinations. This is how I passed BA honors in 1956. My father then shifted from Sivakasi to Bombay. We still lived in the same one room all together. There were some days when my brothers younger brothers who are, I'm sorry to say, no more now, younger than me. You used to go to job party to sell gulab jamun to the people as vendors. And from that, they used to earn enough to pay their fees which was hardly about one or two rupees per month. After I became teacher, there was some income coming which helped me to go further and help my brothers and sisters. So the life after partition was full of struggle, turmoil, difficulties, problems. And side by side, I had a flair for writing. I must tell you also that at the age of 14 or 15 years, Karate, I 
published one children's magazine, Bar Sandesh. At the time, I had good friends. There was a friend of mine, I still remember his Kul Vasanwal Ramchanan. He was doing a Punjab matric. He was well built, two years senior to me in age. So we said that he was above 18 and he had to give a declaration as an editor before the court. Since I was not in a position to declare the publication as editor. The magazine ran, ran for six months or so. It was a monthly magazine. It became popular, but then the partition took place and we had to migrate to India. When you came to India and you were living under these circumstances, what happened to the writing? Because you know, one says that writers need space to write, they need privacy. How did your writing survive through all that? See, we used to attain weekly other big class we used to call. It was gathering a writer and mostly progressive writers. This was a Professor Enu Malkani was the president of Sindhi Sai Commander that was Sindhi Writers Association. We used to meet at different places in Bombay every week, present our writings, invite comments from our friends, improve upon our writing. Because all of us had flair and we felt that reaching the masses, reaching the people was possible only through writing because people knew Sindhi at the time when they came after partition. There were a few magazines like Nai Dunya, like Kahani, which were literary magazines. They used to be eager to collect these articles from us and publish in their articles. So the interest continued uh, along with my teaching, along with my studies. Involved. What were the themes of this writing that happened immediately after partition? Well, Talking about the traumas? The when I talk of progressive writing, they were in 1942 movement, there were some young writers who participated actively in 1942 quite a movement. Could you name some of them? Say Govind Mali, A. J. Uttam, and scores of others, Sobo Gyan Janani, maybe even Govind Punjabi. These were the pillars of progressive writing in Sindhi, influenced by mostly Urdu writers and Hindi writers, because that trend of progressive writing was prevalent in Hindi as well as Urdu. Influenced by that training, we also followed suit. We used to write the poems with slogans, with call for change, call for revolution, call for uh, breaking the system that exploited men, men people, labor, workers. You're talking about in Bombay, post -partition. In Bombay, in Bombay. This was the trend. Mostly, that was reflected in our writings. Revolution, change. We already had suffered the onslaught of partition. We were disturbed. We used to write in such a way so that it creates a sort of awakening in the masses, in the readers. And you'll be 
be surprised that we used to attend number of gatherings in Olyas Nagar, which was known as Kalyan Camp in those days. We used to write, uh, uh, recite our poems, read our short stories, extracts from novels. Before the masses, people had no other work. They used to listen to us, whatever was the quality of writing. They used to clap and then encouraged us to write more. So it was, so to say, uh, raising slogans against the system, against the exploitation of men, again from, uh, from men, and uh, change for revolution, change, change for system. Injustice made it out to the people. This was a dream. From 1942, you know, post-partition to today, it's been a very long journey and a lot has changed. Today one hears that there's no interest in Sindhi writing, no interest in the Sindhi culture. Would you agree with this? Do you think that Sindhi language is declining? I do that unfortunately, the train that is present now is not in favor of Sindhi as a language. Are you speaking the reason India? being the reason being that we was we are scattered in all nooks and corners of India. We are not concentrated at one place. So the loss of land has deprived us from the roots we belong to. Wherever the people settled for their livelihood, in whatever province, in whatever territory, they learned the habits, the languages, the culture of those people around them. If they settled in Bengal, they learned Bengal. If they went to Kerala, they learned Malala and so on. And Sindhi schools were not available except in metro cities like Bombay, Delhi, in other parts of India. They were, they were compelled by the circumstances to send their children to the schools that did not teach sin. This is one reason. Second thing, a sense of insecurity is inbuilt in us. Historically. Sin has always been the target of invaders. From Khyber Pass, first they used to come to Sin to loot Sin. And that has gone in our, into our blood. Therefore the Sindhis became more interested in saving, in earning, rather than, rather than pursuing the other final elements of life. So that is built in our blood. Insecurity we suffered from also contributed to our being deprived of the flavor of our language and literature. Over the years, these many schools in Bombay have also been closing down. Why is that? And what impact has that had? As I said, that in only in major cities like Bombay and Delhi, schools were in Sindhi, through Sindhi medium, and I am the product of Sindhi medium. In the other provinces, there were no schools. In Gujarat case, there were schools. But then, overall tendency of the people in India, or the inclination was towards English. They wanted to be, to be international studies. They wanted to learn English. Therefore, they sent their children 
to English medium schools. This resulted into the closure of Sindhi medium schools and Sindhi being cut off from their old mother tongue. This was the main reason. Second, there were some people who wanted that Sindhi script should be forgotten. Forgotten. They wanted that Devnagri should be adopted as our script. As opposed to the Vashu Arabic. Yeah. So it brought a sort of another partition in the community. There were some people, young, young, young writers like me, who were in favor of the older Sindhi script, Arabic script. But there were people, old gods, who wanted that the script should be changed to their love. So it brought an end the partition in the community. We fought for it. So much so that we had to ask the government to recognize the original Sindhi script but not Devnagri. And we succeeded yeah. in that. But the Devnagri script was used before it was standardized. It was. There were Devnagri, there were Gurumukhi, there were Hatai, there were other scripts also. Hatai was written mostly uh, by the Baniyas, who were businessmen who used to write in that script. Gurumukhi was prevalent in households, in families, where they used to. Uh, See, uh, read Gurwani and all these ladies, most of them knowing Gurwani and Gurwani. Sindhi script came after British rule. But over the years, the product, production of literature has been so, so much. To, I mean, uh, the books came out in hundreds that we failed that we'll be deprived of our old literature, we'll be cut off from the old literature in Sindhi script in case we adopt uh, uh, Devnagri script. It was not possible for our community to retransliterate all the books, if not all the books, even the most useful books. See like your, uh, books of research, mm. books of some standard literature, into them now. There were no funds and nobody could help us. Therefore, our objection to Devnagri script was this that it was not possible to retransliterate the whole literature into Devnagri. This is one. Second argument was that by adopting Devnagri script, we would be permanently cut off from our land of birth. That is sense. Where Sindhi script is prevalent, it is in villages where our literature, our books are being printed in their Nadi script. Because in Sindhi script, Kala's books have been translated, published in uh, Sindh, Pakistan. She has been awarded by them. All her novels have been published in uh, Sindh also. Sundri Yudham Chandani novels have been published in Sindhi. Satish Dr. Satish Roda short stories have been published. Research papers have been published. So we thought that by adopting their novel, we will be completely cut off from our birth uh, place, our life. But then what is your view that today, increasingly, youngsters are being encouraged to learn Sindhi through Devnagri? They are being told, oh, it's just like Hindi, so it's not difficult. What's your view on that? Because there is a very real danger of losing. Our fear was this. We told them, those who were in support of their Nagri, we told them that the children who would be knowing their Nagri script will never script, never stick to their Nagri script for Sindhi. Because they already knew Devnagri, they would search over to Hindi. That's what 
has happened now. In place like Gandhi Damadipur, Devnavali script for Sindhi is not prevalent, it's the schools have become Hindi reading schools. That was our thing. This is even in Adipur, which is yes. playing such a role in promoting Sindhi. And today, you wrote a Devnavali script for Sindhi here. They started as uh, Devnavali script for Sindhi, but they switched over to Hindi media. Now that the school is in Sindhi media. It, in, in Hindi media. Hindi media. This was our thing. That's why we went against this one. Second, which I told you, that we would be cut off permanently from our side. But today when there is a big dictionary project happening, which is bringing out one lakh entries in all the scripts, in Roman script as well. So, do you think that would do something towards making youngsters more comfortable? What I feel. A script may not uh, be that important that we should not learn or we should unlearn. What I feel personally that original script should be retained, additional scripts can be adopted. Wherever it is not possible to teach Sindhi through Sindhi Arabic, do through Devnavi script, but not at the place of Arabic script. You can even go for Roman script. There is no, I am personally against that. But in today's world, you have to go also according to, with computers here, with technology developed. We have to adapt ourselves also to that train and encourage that, that we should be additional step, not at the cost of older Not skills. the basic script that people know today. Because knowing a script is knowing the script, knowing language is different. If today I am learning Hindi, if I am today learning Devnavi, it doesn't mean that through Devnavi I will be in the position to learn Hindi. No, they will not. They will rather like to learn Hindi rather than going their own to their own mother. mother. Right. Today in the family you will not find the children speaking with their parents in Sindhi. They they communicate through uh, 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 Hindi. They do. So what is all this doing to contemporary Sindhi literature today? Where is it? What state? We, we are in a state of You may say coma. A few people like us have been fighting for now culture, preservation of culture, preservation of language, preservation of literature. We feel that through oral culture we may possibly be able to bring Sindhi community together because we are in a state, we are, we are in a situation where we are completely scattered all over the world. So through culture, through spoken word possibly we will be able to find our own community, bring them together. This one. But what does that do to the writing and to the writers, as it said? <laughs> That's right. Readers are not there. We get awards, we get appreciation, but from a few. You will find it. You will find difficult to get even one reader to write a letter of appreciation to a writer. That I have gone through this book, I have dis disliked it, or I have liked it. There's no appreciation also. But is this, a, you know, is this a malaise of literature as a whole, you know, serious literature is declining in terms of its readership in different languages, not just Sindhi. So is this something unique about Sindhi, the Sindhi situation that would be applicable in such a case? Mm. 
Because increasingly in our electronic age, you know, people are more interested in films and television. No, I this is what I say. That as additional script, we can learn as many scripts as possible. Should learn. So learning through Roman script and Devanagari script is uh, is no problem. But not at the placement of Sindhi or anything else. This is what I feel. Additional script, yes, you can. In Roman script, I, I personally don't mind where they can learn Sindhi through uh, Roman script. Let them learn. At least they are learning the language. Right. Yeah. But not at the time. This script should remain. It keeps us bound with our mother land. And we do not want to disown it. Being a stateless, we are in a state where we have no roots at all and roots are there. We should accept. And through this, what you describe as a state of coma, you personally have continued writing for the last several years. Yes. So would you like to tell us a little about your own career as a writer and then maybe read something? Well, I started write, writing poetry. I am known to be a poet. But I have written more in prose. I have three collections of poems. The recent one being in 2008. I have written one novel. I have written character sketches of people. I have written travel log. On which I got Science Academy Award in 1988. I have written two full length dramas. One of them has been made into a film in Sindhi. So almost all branches of literature, genres of literature, I have contributed. It's very, maybe hum -com, it is a hum -com contribution. There are people who have written dozens of books and they are not being recognized. Luckily, a few of us who are left do appreciate what we write and that's enough. If a few of us even are in a position to appreciate what we write, I feel we are recognized. Would you like to read something for us in Sindhi and then maybe the oh, English translation? Yes, of course. This is one of my, these are two points I write, recite, which is in my latest, latest collection of poems. What is the collection called? Poetry, poetry. But the collection is called what, the title? Twinji Agarya Yungaradi, The Tales of Your Street. Tales. Chanan Salan Kapo Diyo Bareo. चंगन सालन का पोए डियो बड़े हो लगो से शहर माहू घर बड़े After so many years, after many years, there was a lamp that was lit in the hut. Bibi, the master of the house, has returned from the city to village. खनी लोही बदन नितो घर माँ as a young man, he had steel, he was a steel body, bodied young man. He had left the village. But he has returned after being melted as a wax. After toiling under the sun for years, he had become a wax and had melted. He had gone in a still body. Mataro Juan Nito Utamo. A hefty young man, he had left the village. Bani Buzarg Vanya Jo Varbari. But he has returned with grey hair and grey beard as a husband of his old wife. थे पहले झुपड़ी के लिए पूछाने। In village he came and asked for his hut 
Where is my attitude? Things have changed over the years. So he had asked, where is my house? People started laughing. You don't know your house? You are asking us, are you mad? Over the years there are so many changes. The whole landscape has changed. He could not trace even his own hut where he was. People laughed at his simplicity. What a simple man is. He asked him for his own opinion. They feel possibly this wise man has become mad. What he had to jump at the end, he could make it feel. The square of the city and village, they will be gathering today. Panjan Sanam Kapo member after five years, the member of the assembly of the parliament has returned to village. He has remembered the people after five years when it is time for the election. This is the state of the now. This, this is the Ghazal. And this is the Ghazal. Jinje Mucha Marota. Those who are just doing like this, Mujko Tale, Yakate, Mount Kina Okotai, they are not real people. They are only hiding their face inside the cover. Mukho. Tinsan Pero Sodo sign Jinja Kata Kotai. How can I deal with the people? and bargain and talk to them about business. Their all accounts are false. I can't do that. Be as be as as laganta. Frame on the ground for time. They are lifeless. They are feeling it. They are not having feeling. They are just like photographs in a frame, in a frame, put in a frame. Sari Pati Kamiya They are burned, burned themselves from both ends. They are burned, they have become ashes. Ash. Separate they are total. Now they have turned to the left towards of cigarettes. Completely burned. Kare Kasyama Bhaji Bhaji from the gutters, from small streams. They come as lotas full of water. Manu nine lota. They are not people who lote. Lote Bhante Aaye, Kahi Se Bhi Bhante Aaye Nye Asa. Dhan Medin Tha, Chhojo Bhai, Dhan Medin Tha, Chhojo Bhai, Putta, Pota, Parapota Aaye. They are busy in collecting and saving money. And when you ask them, Why? Bholte Hain, Bhai, Hume, Mere Bete Hain, Pote Hain, पर होते हैं उनके लिए तो बचाना है घर घर में दीवार हुआ है एवरी हाउस इज अ पार्टीशन घर घर में दीवार हुआ है वेरी हूं वेर विछोटा जस्ट एनिमिटी एवरी हाउस इज पार्टीशन एंड अमंग द मेंबर्स ऑफ द हाउस दे आर ट्रीज दे आर पार्टीशन दे आर दे आर नो मींस ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन Taking man but even there are some people. Uh, so it's like to Mr. Kovotin or to Chakra Zidubanati. But KK man Messiah, here I became a cook. Just like Elijah, Dutri, Kyalini, 
Thank you, Dr. Prakash. This has been very, very interesting and very inspirational. Thank you.